Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. I wanted to bring you up to date today on something that I reported on back in May about a strike with CNH. Doesn't have a huge impact on most of the folks that watch my channel. Most, most people that watch my channel are small tractor owners and this story relates to larger tractors, but it's in the tractor world and I felt obligated to give everybody an update on how it resolved itself and it did resolve itself. And uh, the way it resolved itself was better than the way it could have resolved itself. Um, there's a couple of factories, um, one in Iowa and uh, one in Racine, Wisconsin, uh, that went on strike. And they're owned by CNH, uh, which stands for Case New Holland. And Case and New Holland were two separate companies that merged together in 1999. And they're, uh, you can uh, buy stock in the, on the New York Stock Exchange from CNH, but they're largely owned by Fiat. A lot of people don't know that. In, in North America, they've got two dealer organizations that compete with one another with sometimes the same product, sometimes different products. But anyway, what happened back in May was a couple of their factories went out on strike and it had a huge impact on a good part of the industry. And, and uh, let me tell you what happened. Uh, the, the strike was by 1,100 workers at the CNH production facilities in Racine, Wisconsin and Burlington, Iowa. And the Burlington plant produces rough train forklifts and tractor loader backhoes uh, for case construction. And the Racine plant produces parts for Case's axial flow combines, which uh, they're a big player in the combine market, uh, uh, parts for their cotton pickers and articulated tractors, uh, but also the Magnum series of Case Tractor, which is a huge player in the row crop market, and the new Holland T8 tractor, which competes in that market as well. So all models of both tractors are over 150 horsepower, and of course are primarily used by the crop farmers. So uh, the uh, workers in those two factories went out on strike, I think it was the 1st of May of 2022, and they've been out on strike all this time. And uh, I've been kind of following this, and I thought, well, whenever it resolved itself, I'll do a little blurb on it. And uh, last week, uh, new Holland dealers went to their annual meeting and were told by management, we're done. Uh, the people that are striking are gonna be replaced and that's the end of it. So when I heard that, and there wasn't anything official, that was just something that was said at the uh, meeting, I'm like, oh boy, this is not going to end well for anybody. Of course, there's, there's a lot going on in the big tractor market because uh, earlier, before CNH went out on strike, Deer had had a strike that, that slowed down their production of big tractors. And right now, big tractors are in really high demand and the supply is, is really light. There's not that much supply out there. And what's going on, of course, the main thing is the war in the Ukraine. Ukraine is a major producer of, of crops and uh, American farmers are, are trying to gear up to take up the slack from uh, what's going on in the Ukraine with the Russian invasion. So they need big tractors and uh, both Deere and CNH have had hiccups in their delivery based on these uh, factory strikes. And um, when I heard that uh, a New Holland management had told their dealers that uh, they were going to let these folks that worked in these factories go, it's like, oh, that's not good for anybody. Because if you had that happen, you know, number one, you got a bunch of people out of work. Uh, number two, you're bringing in new people to train to try to get up to speed on building these tractors, which are pretty highly sophisticated tractors. And that's not, that's not going to be good. And you got your dealer networks all stuck in the middle, need inventory, could sell inventory, uh, need tractors to, for their livelihood and can't get tractors. And so just a bad situation for everybody. Well, the good news is they worked it out and they didn't come to blows. Uh, what was announced at the dealer meeting was probably a little bit of a play, to, a political play to get the uh, union to agree to the terms and, and that happened. Uh, so what we know is after months of difficult negotiation, this is a letter from uh, New Holland to their dealers, and it says, after months of difficult negotiations and after initially failing to ratify our, in our, I love it, they had a last, best, and final offer. They had an enhanced last, best, and final offer. Uh, so on Saturday of January 21st, our union represented employees put the measure up for one more vote, and we are thrilled to report that recognizing 
and this again is the company speaking, recognizing the fair and equitable nature of this offer. This time, employees voted to ratify the contract, end the strike, and return to work. And it goes on, we look forward to welcoming our employees back to work, building the machines that help our dealers and customers do their important jobs, feeding the world, and building its uh, critical, essential infrastructure. And again, that's the words of the company at the end of the strike. So bottom line is uh, the case New Holland workers and Racine and uh, uh, Burlington, Iowa are headed back to work and, and uh, hopefully this will soon uh, get them back up to speed with uh, tractor loader backhoes and big farm tractors that are badly needed right now in the field. And um, what, what we know about it, the contract included wage increases uh, shift premium increases, classification upgrades, and other improvements to the previous offer uh, that UAW members rejected. And uh, that includes wage increases of 28% to 38% over four years. So it sounds like they got a good deal out of it. Union members were reportedly unhappy with the health care provisions of the offer. So they didn't get everything they wanted, but they got enough. Everybody's going back to work and hopefully uh, they can build, build tractors again and, uh, and feed the world and, and everybody's happy. So that happened this week, just wanted to bring you up to speed on it. In next week's video, we're gonna talk about what happened with tractor sales in 2022. We've got the final numbers back on where tractor sales went. We're gonna talk about where inventory is and what it means for you. Thanks for watching.